morning San Antonio starts right now. Hi, good morning, happy Monday. It is August 30th. Well, if you had a great weekend, we'll talk to Justin in just a second. But first up, uh, some of the employees of a New Orleans area TV station had to be evacuated uh, over the weekend. That's right. This is uh, station WGNO, and they were rushed out of the control room as the roof was ripped off. Longtime journalist Sir Susan Roskin, who anchors at the station, tweeted that Hurricane Ida had forced staffers out of the control room right in the midst of some of their live, live coverage. She wrote, the ceiling has peeled away. That's right. They tweeted uh, another reporter, Chris Waltley, tweeted a photo where people could see straight through the damaged roof and the sky. Yeah, yeah video showing water coming through mm -hmm. part of the ceiling right there. You're seeing it right there. And yes, they're probably having to, to still keep on the air as they're doing all this, but the video shows the water coming through and a meteorologist Brooke, uh, I think it was Lazier, described parts of the ceiling coming down inside the weather center as well. Uh, another one of their staffers reports one of the stations, it says satellites, I think they mean satellite dishes. Oh, probably. Got smashed in yes. the storm as well. No reports of injuries there at the studio, but of course, you know, a lot of tension as the storm's passing right close by. They're in the middle of all their wall-to-wall -wall live coverage like TV stations tend to do in breaking events. And then you're told, hey, part of the roof's coming off. We may need to get out of here. Yeah, a little bit of a scary situation there, I'm sure. And of course, oh, oh there you go. There was that video right there. Foam ceiling tiles falling yeah, in. Very scary. And of course, like our, our thoughts go to all the people uh, affected by the hurricane and now tropical storm Ida. Well, more on that coming up. Here's today's nine at nine. At least one person is confirmed dead after Category 4 Hurricane Ida made landfall in South Louisiana yesterday. Officials say a tree landed on a home. Ida has now weakened to a tropical storm but still packs strong winds over a million people are without power this morning. Thousands are recovering in Mexico after Category 1 Hurricane Nora slammed the west coast of Mexico. Buildings collapsed and rivers overflowed leading to devastating flooding. At least one person is dead, seven others are missing. With the deadline to withdraw troops from Afghanistan less than 24 hours away, the State Department says at least 250 U.S. citizens are still in the country. Rockets reportedly hit a neighborhood outside of the Kabul airport this morning. It's unclear who is behind those attacks. 13 American service members were brought back to the U.S. Sunday after they were killed outside Kabul International Airport, trying to ensure safe passage for those attempting to leave. The Caldor Fire south of Lake Tahoe is prompting new evacuation orders, including a hospital full of patients. Fire crews say the fire is picking up pace, growing by over 15,000 acres Sunday night. After nearly two weeks, the fire is only 6% contained. The same pipeline that was shut down from a ransomware attack earlier this year has been turned off again, this time as a precautionary measure for Tropical Storm Ida. This will say the pipeline will be turned back on once crews can fully inspect its infrastructure. Electric vehicles under a bit of a shadow after the big recall by General Motors. It's now calling back all of the Bolt electric vehicles it has sold in the last five years amid concerns over battery fires. The USDA warning consumers about a recall of 862,000 pounds of Italian antipasto because of salmonella contamination. That meat was sold at Costco. Kanye West's highly anticipated album, Donda, has been released. It's named after his late mother, Donda West, and features songs on mental health and criminal justice. Kanye says it was done without his approval, and that's today's 9 at 9. 81 degrees out at the airport. Let's go ahead and check in with Justin as, you know, the temperatures kind of get a little heated over here. Yeah, starting to get warm. We may get some showers and storms popping up again this afternoon. We've sort of been in that trend, right, where we get some of these afternoon downpours. It's nice. Uh, it does make it a little humid out there. And, of course, we're still keeping tabs on Ida, which is a tropical storm now, but still putting down a lot of rain. Here in San Antonio, 82 degrees. Dew point is at 73. We've got calm winds and clear skies. Forecast for today takes us up to 94. We will call for a 30% chance of rain. We're not expecting a lot of coverage, but anything that does develop could put down some pretty good rainfall. So beware. Go ahead and grab the umbrella just in case. And there's a look at the satellite picture. You see Ida there. The other concern we're going to worry about today is flooding and the threat for some tornadoes there. Florida up into parts of uh, Alabama, Mississippi as uh, Ida continues to churn north. What a storm it was. Rain chances for us through the afternoon start to pick up, especially around 1, 2 o'clock. 
and that will continue through the evening hours before rain chances drop off tonight. And the looking at the pollen count, moles have dropped significantly from where they were yesterday. They're moderate, 890. Ragweed, pigweed also showing up, but in the low category. And our forecast again, 94 your high temperature. Northwest Chile winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Where does Ida stack up historically? We're going to take a look at that coming up here in just a couple minutes, guys. Justin, thank you very much. 35 at O'Connor. It looks like things are finally running smoothly after an incident that tied up traffic and slowed things down for most of the morning commute. There's a live look at 35 at Walsham Road. We have some flashing lights right there. It looks like maybe a wrecker or sort of construction vehicle, but it's only affecting traffic merging from that on ramp on to 35 northbound. And top stories we are following today. New this morning, one man is fighting for his life after he was shot and run over in the street. Yeah, this happened last night just after 11 on the east side over by South Pine and I-10. That's where SAPD says a 30-year-old man was running with a gunshot wound when he collapsed in the street. Officers say then he was hit by a pickup truck. The driver did stop, I'm sorry, did not stop to help. We have learned this morning that no, they did stop. They did stop to help. They are not expected to face charges. And cleanup is underway following an early morning house fire on the northeast side. It happened around 3 this morning at a home in the 200 block of Maybell, Maybell Drive near I-35. Now, firefighters say they arrived to heavy smoke, but they were able to put out the flames quickly. While no one was hurt, one woman was checked out on the scene as a precaution. No word yet on what sparked that fire or how much the damages will cost. San Antonio Police and Crime Stoppers asking for your help finding the person suspected robbing a Northside Family Dollar Store. It happened back on August 16th in the 5200 block of Blanco Road. That's where investigators say this man walked into the store, assaulted an employee, and took off with items from shelves. If you have any information about who it is and where he is, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. In your other morning headlines, an update on Ida and look at some of the devastation and rescue crews from across the country are headed to Louisiana. A driver hits a teen standing next to a car in a parking lot and an 18 wheeler nailed by a train. Our David Sears is here to explain all of this this morning. Good if morning. you guys have been going up, I know it happens on 281 a lot. I don't know if it happens on 35 or 10, but you're behind one of those 18 wheelers carrying one of those big, huge blades for one oh, of those. Oh, yeah, we've seen quite a bit around here. Yeah, those things are huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The train took it out. I'll show you that in just a second. The Smoothie King is gone, and that picture right there pretty much personifies what it looks like all across New Orleans and even further inland in Louisiana and Mississippi. Hurricane Ida came on shore yesterday with a vengeance. Roofs ripped off of buildings and houses. You saw that, what happened to the TV station there in Louisiana. Businesses flattened, boats sunk, trees ripped right out of the ground, falling onto buildings. A falling tree actually caused a death, so one death so far. The entire city of New Orleans was without power. About a million people statewide lost power. Of course, we're not mentioning the flood and the rainstorm surge. It was incredible. There are reports of water going over the top of a levee, but so far it seems the levee system overall has held. Time will tell, and that would be a huge relief when you consider the overall devastation left behind by Ida. When you have Mother Nature throw at you a, a storm this strong with the surge, the wind, the rain that, that we, we're talking about with Hurricane Ida, there's going to be devastating impacts. Yeah, and this tropical storm been done. Justin's going to show us, give us an update of what this hurricane and now tropical storm Ida is doing. Of course, it's still wreaking havoc across the U.S. He'll show you the path and give you some particulars about this storm. It was a historic event for sure. Help across the country is headed to Louisiana. The Oakland Fire Department's Task Force 4 pulling out of the station there in Oakland, headed south to support FEMA. This unit is primarily a water rescue unit. They're taking swift water boats, boats that don't need motors so they can get into some tough places to rescue stranded folks. They also have search and rescue dogs with them. And all the way across the country, there's a team headed from New York to Baton Rouge. New York Task Force 1 is made up of urban search and rescue personnel, 83 members headed south. They also have swift water rescue craft and search and rescue dogs. All right, let's take you to a parking lot in the pick and save. This is up in Milwaukee. This is a woman running after a car. You saw her. 
She has something in each hand, couldn't figure that one out, but moments later, that driver right there slams into two people who were just standing next to another car. We're not gonna show you the contact. There's a woman with a, what looks like pipes or something in her hand. We're not gonna show you the contact right there because it's too graphic. We can tell you that one of those people standing there was a 15 year old. She got pinned to the car. Another woman was knocked to the ground. The teenager actually suffered a broken leg along with some other injuries. The video that I seen on Facebook, it just, it was um, real. When I seen it on Facebook, I showed my boss, my employees. I said, I just shopped here the other day and it just scared me. And it make me feel like really not safe to come here anymore. Yeah, Milwaukee police still looking for that driver. And finally this morning, just in case you haven't seen this one, that is an 18 wheeler carrying a blade for one of those huge wind turbines and watch out. I don't think that wind turbine is going to work. It was going across the railroad tracks in Luling. The driver said he was about two thirds across the tracks when the arm signals came down and then the train came crashing down on him. The good news, no serious injuries. The truck, train and crossing all torn up pretty good though. Everything got cleared up by 10 o'clock last night. This is why you look both ways before you cross the tracks. Well, what worries me is there looks like a smaller vehicle, some sort of a oh. smaller equipment that, that, yes. that, that got pulled around by the blade being smashed. But I never heard any more about that either. We'll try to well, find and then out what's going on. Yeah, that. I see what you're talking saying. about right there. Yeah, that. Yeah, that. I think you're talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I... Scary. Hmm. All right. <laughs> thank you, David. There's a train coming. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's hard to stop a train, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Right now, 909, about 81 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. And later in our next half hour, we take you inside the German airbase that is now home to thousands of Afghan refugees as they wait to find out what's next in the journey of rebuilding their lives. And also ahead, how a Ciblo restaurant is still serving the community despite all the challenges they face from COVID-19. And a question. And this is a live look at one of the power outage maps in South Louisiana this morning. You can see there's a sea of red, which is exactly what officials warned ahead of Hurricane Ida. That's right. Over a million customers without a sea or power to keep their food fresh. Officials say it's just too early to estimate even when power could be restored. Their goal this morning is to get crews on the ground to assess all the damage. The good news this morning, the storm is moving away from Louisiana, but you can see behind us giving folks a chance to get out and see what kind of damage they are facing. Isabel Rosales is in New Orleans with the latest. Hurricane Ida slamming into Louisiana as a Category 4 storm Sunday is one of the strongest to ever hit the state. I don't think that there could have been a worse path for this storm. Um, it's going to have some significant impacts. With sustained winds as strong as 150 miles per hour and storm surge up to 15 feet, the National Weather Service warns parts of southeastern Louisiana could be uninhabitable for weeks. This is a devastating hurricane. It's going to have catastrophic impact. Though Ida is slowly weakening, it continues to wreak havoc as it moves north across the state. Heavy rainfall and top levees now posing flash flooding threats. That intense rainfall, that's going to create a lot of urban flooding um, across many of the jurisdictions, New Orleans, Baton Rouge, and all of the different uh, localities in between. Um, and it's going to strain the system. It's going to strain the drainage system. Widespread power outages adding to the danger. Some of the lines can be restored in short, shorter order, and then advising us that maybe it'll be a few days, but it could be a matter of weeks. As officials prepare to assess the scope of the devastation, many worry the situation could be dire for those who stayed behind. It seems like there's hundreds, possibly more people, you know, trapped in their houses. So it's going to be a pretty, pretty bad scene uh, with a lot of work to do to move quickly and safely. In New Orleans, Isabel Rosales. Right now, it's 915 and Justin is here with more on some context or perspective on how this storm stacks up or compares. It was a powerful storm, a compact, powerful storm, but it is, as you just saw, it's done a lot of damage here in Louisiana and now moving up into parts of uh, Mississippi. I want to show you some video here. This is from the eye wall, which is just incredible stuff. Looking at it, you can see the blue skies 
there. This was just a very picturesque storm in the sense of its structure, and that's how we knew it was incredibly powerful. Uh, but just a, a incredible view there from the hurricane hunters going inside this hurricane from above. And let's see how this thing stacks up as far as history goes. Uh, when we're talking about wind speed, and this is just wind speed only, the Labor Day hurricane back in 1935, which hit the 40 Keats, was a cat five. Winds were at 185 miles per hour. But Ida ranks fifth here. It ties with several other storms, but it had winds of 150 miles per hour. It was a strong cat four, again, ranking just behind Camille, Andrew, and Michael as far as wind speed strength as it made landfall uh, across the, the United States, United States mainland. So, uh, Again, st uh, still churning this morning. Winds are at 45 miles per hour. It's a tropical storm. Heavy rain from Jackson, Mississippi, back down towards Mobile. And you've got a tornado watch box. You always got to watch out for tornadoes when you have these hurricanes move inland. You still have spin in there in the atmosphere. And you're going to get probably a few tornadoes on some of these outer bands. It's moving north at 8 miles per hour. It will continue to weaken as it moves north, but dropping heavy rain along the way. And by Wednesday, this thing's kind of falling apart. Uh, but as far as rainfall goes, four to six additional inches of rain as it does track north through parts of Mississippi, Alabama, and Tennessee. Here's our scene. We've uh, not had any effects from Ida at all. And clear skies right now, 82 at the airport, 85 stints and 83 Kelly, 82 at Randolph, and light winds across the board. You can see the clear skies here on the satellite picture. And as a result, things are warming up pretty quickly. 80 in Seguin, 82 New Braunfels, 82 right now in Hondo, 73 in Rock Springs. There is a little bit of cloud cover there. Same story up around Fredericksburg, 73. That's a comfortable number. Forecast highs today will be in the mid-90s. Heat index values, I think, will get pretty close to 100. It'll be another sticky, hot day. The hope, though, is that the heat and humidity combine to give us some cooling showers this afternoon. We've sort of been in this pattern, right, where we get some of these afternoon downpours. And this shows uh, the activity around 12 o'clock. does start to pop up some showers and storms. And I think the favorite area today is probably going to be the hill country, maybe out west, but even here in San Antonio, there is a chance for rain. And by the time we get to 10 o'clock, falls apart. And then we do it again tomorrow, although I think we'll have less coverage tomorrow. Just a 20% chance of rain on your Tuesday. Uh, rain chances today again start to pick up right after noon time, and I think you'll see your best shot uh, during the afternoon hours. Here's the current setup. We have Ida, of course, to our east, high pressure to our northwest, and Nora, which was a hurricane at one point, coming through Mexico, dropping some heavy rain there. Uh, that moves west. Ida moves east. We're sort of in the middle, but high pressure doesn't build right over top of us. We still get some disturbances working underneath this ridge, and that will still keep some slight rain chances in the forecast. So 30% chance of rain today, 20% chance tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, actually all the way through the seven day forecast. So just keep the umbrella with you. Rain chances will be low each and every day, but they are there. Heat index is going to be around 100 and temperatures right there in the mid 90s as we head into September, guys. A hot September. Thank you, Justin. Yep. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. We take a look at what's up in South Texas. How the Below Restaurant is still helping its community after the struggles brought on by COVID-19. We all know that the hospitality industry took a big hit during the pandemic, but a restaurant out in Cibolo didn't let that stop them from serving their community. In this edition of What's Up South Texas, Japanese Gray has a look at how they took the phrase pay it forward to another level. You know, I don't think we ever had a thought of, you know, giving up. God's hand was in it a lot. Dave and Jackie Peterson opened their Cibolo Bar and Restaurant, Mako's on the Creek, a few years ago. So I was a fighter pilot in the Air Force, and we have a habit of naming each other. So I was named Mako, which is the second deadliest shark in the world. So it was kind of a good name to have. But like many in the hospitality industry, they had no idea the toll the pandemic would take on their small business and the community. They could have closed their doors, but they didn't. Many of our staff members, this is how they take care of their families. They brought back a pay it forward idea their oldest son came up with years ago. But this time, instead of paying it forward one drink at a time at the bar, 
they decided to pay it forward with meals. People could donate $10 and that would be one meal. And the meal was a burger, a chicken sandwich, or a salad. You could say, hey, I want to send 20 meals to a hospital. Or you could say, hey, you do with it as you see fit. Essential workers were a priority. Reaching out to hospitals, reaching out to clinics, reaching out to schools, reaching out to a lot of different nursing homes. Once we launched it, the community was amazing. It allowed people that wanted to help an avenue to help and it allowed our staff to work so they got to continue to do what they love to do and able to able to make a living. They even provided meals during the February winter storm. We'd have some light for a little bit and then we were cooking in the dark. Luckily, most of the cooking equipment's gas. All together, they've been able to feed over 1,000 people with at least $10,000 worth of food. For that, the city of Cibolo awarded the couple with the Gary Kelly Community Service Reward. The family says they will continue this program for as long as they can. You don't have to move mountains, but you can make a difference. For What's Up South Texas, I'm Jaffney Gray. And there's a lot more ahead on GMSA at 9. Local restaurants honor the 13 service members who lost their lives in Afghanistan. It's just one of the stories on KSAT.com right now. A closer look at that coming up with our RJ Marquez. But first, after the break, a look at what life is like for thousands of Afghan refugees as they work to figure out what the rest of their life will look like. Right now, it is 928 here in San Antonio. You're looking live in Kabul, Afghanistan, where it is just shy of 7 p.m., meaning we are just hours away from the very last day of planned U.S. military operations there in Afghanistan. For thousands of evacuees there who made it out, one of their first stops is Ramstein Air Base in Germany. Families are living in tents set up around that base, waiting for the next step in their journey. Atika Schubert has a look inside. Becca, we've got as we get into his car, Brigadier General Joshua Olson, commander of the 86th Airlift Wing and installation commander at Ramstein Air Base, grapples with the sheer number of new arrivals. This is now my family at least until they they get off our air patch, you know, and we're able to put them somewhere else. But it's my family and I got to figure out how to protect them. More than 20,000 men, women and children have passed through here since August 20th, fleeing Afghanistan after the Taliban took over. That's more than double the population of the German municipality that hosts the base. And so many children. Olson says about 6,000, including at least three born on the base something never encountered here before. We had airplanes stacked up and they're like, we don't have enough diapers, we don't have enough. And we're like, oh my gosh, who would have thought that, right? Rammstein Air Base has always been a gateway for those in uniform, a place to heal for wounded service members, to prepare for what the military calls a dignified transfer for those who gave their lives. Now, Olson wants the base to provide the warmest welcome it can. An army of civilian volunteers is also helping out, sorting donations from the wider community. You know, it's the kid that puts the ball back over. It's the kid that plays the ukulele. It's the, that, you know, when we get out of the way and you watch just the, the pure humanity of, and love of people and the connection to little kids and kinder. But as we pass more and more tents, it's clear the numbers coming in from Kabul far outpace the number flying out, and the strain is showing. Did you think it would get this big? Never. Not even close. And I knew, I mean, we, I knew what we could build, and I knew, and we were like, okay, and we thought it through. But the chaos and the mayhem of, you know, if we were like, we can get to 10 right away, and, and we've had that capability. But when we were at 10, there was 15 coming in, and I'm like, oh, that math doesn't work out so well. The delays are frustrating to all. Olson says he wants to get this new family off to a fresh start as soon as possible. You think about our, our you know, parents and grandparents that got on a boat and came across and went to America for that and all the things that they sacrificed and you look at all the things and we, we've forgotten that in a lot of ways and, and the sacrifices not only you know, for the last 20 years that the military is born for, for a lot of these new Afghan Americans' freedom. That freedom will have to wait a few more days. Until then, Olson says he's doing the best he can. Atika Schubert for CNN at Rammstein Air Base in Germany.
One of countless stories that will be told in the coming days and decades to come. Outside with live cam back here at home, 83 degrees out at San Antonio International Airport. And Justin, as I look at you over your shoulder, I see the remnants of Ida and it's slowed down considerably, which of course increases the flood threats. You're exactly right. A lot of rain has already fallen. There's going to be more today. There will be flood threats across parts of Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, and of course, Louisiana, which is going to be doing a lot of cleanup over the next several weeks. You know, something interesting with this storm, usually we get some dry air, some hot air on the backsides of these uh, tropical systems when you're on the, the west side of it. But we really aren't seeing that so much here in South Texas. We still have enough moisture in place where we could get some showers and storms this afternoon. There's a look at the satellite picture and you see where Ida is uh, working its way into Mississippi at this point. For us, uh, not much rain out there right now, but the uh, computer models are indicating we can see some isolated to scattered activity a little bit later today. We did see some rain overnight out west of San Antonio. Here's what to expect today. Partly cloudy, isolated storms, rest of the week, stray storm or two. Rain chances are not great, but they are there throughout the seven day and in the tropics Ida dissipates, but there's more out there. We're going to take a look at what could be developing next couple of uh, days coming up here in just a few minutes. 94 your high temperature today, 30% chance of rain. Northwest Julie winds five to 10 miles per hour guys. Thank you, Justin. Taking a look out at Transguide, uh, still a little bit slow there at I-35 in Walson, but things are moving. Looks like we have a stalled vehicle right there by that exit ramp. Well, this morning on KSAT.com, San Antonio organizations step up to help four-legged friends who had to leave Louisiana because of Hurricane Ida. And people in Alabama are doing a double take after a sheriff's deputy becomes a viral sensation due to his resemblance to Dwayne The Rock Johnson. RJ Marcus joins us in the studio with all of those trending stories and more. And it's more than a passing <laughs> resemblance. It's pretty close, yeah. And uh, if there's someone that you have to be, you know, uh, that you resemble, the, the Rock would be a pretty good option That's there. Not a bad doppelganger. <laughs> yeah, definitely not. <laughs> yeah, we'll check out that story here in just a bit, guys. But of course, we know that there's been a mass evacuation in Louisiana and the Gulf Coast. And, and of course, that includes pets and other animals in need of shelter. San Antonio organizations are lending their resources to help animals in need after Hurricane Ida made landfall. The San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo offered hurricane evacuees a location to board their horses for free on the Freeman Coliseum grounds. And the San Antonio Humane Society took in a group of 16 dogs on Saturday to help assist the Houston SPCA after the animals receive a clean medical check. They will be available for adoption. The shelter is also accepting donations like bottled water and treats for its relief efforts. And in the North Texas area, a shelter in Carrollton rescued more than 51 animals ahead of Ida's landfall. If you're interested in helping out, check out KSAT.com for more information. Of course, we know a lot of animals and, uh, you know, just different needs that people have as they, uh, as they evacuate, trying to figure that all out. Okay, guys, moving on to a bit of a social media movement that gained some traction over the weekend. Several San Antonio area bars honored the U.S. service members killed in the Kabul airport attacks last week. These local spots reserved tables, chairs, and 13 drinks in honor of the fallen soldiers. They posted photos on Facebook and other social media platforms giving thanks to the soldiers that died in those attacks. And on Saturday, the Department of Defense identified the 13 fallen soldiers. You can read the latest information on this and see more of this story and, of course, these photos on KSET.com. Okay, guys, moving on. We know, of course, a lot of things are coming back, and that includes this year's World Heritage Festival. That is right around the corner. And now we have a schedule of, of events to celebrate and promote our San Antonio missions. That being the missions, not the baseball team. The sixth annual festival will run from September 8th through the 12th and will include both virtual and in-person events. Some activities include a mural tour, audio tour, and a mass by Archbishop Gustavo Garcia Siler and other events. There will also be a light show at Mission San Jose and movies and music under the stars. So we have full details on our website. The San Antonio missions were designated as a World Heritage Site back in 2015 and were the first in Texas to earn that label. All right, guys, so back to the story here. If you have to be confused for someone famous, right? It might as well be Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Yes, a sergeant in Alabama is capturing the attention of thousands on social media for his unmistakable, unmistakable resemblance to the actor and former professional wrestler. Check this out. The attention started from a viral video on TikTok, but even the sheriff's office took notice and acknowledged Sergeant Eric Field's popularity on Facebook. So some users are now calling him Dwayne The Cop Johnson. <laughs> 
<laughs> They're also comparing him to actor Vin Diesel as well. Wow. So Fields has worked for the sheriff's office for 17 years and counting. He says the attention he receives from being the actor's doppelganger has been a running joke for several years and adds, well, it could be worse, people, I guess. So yes. people have talked about it for <laughs> it a while. And we're just now, the rest of us, catching up to the resemblance. Yes. Uh, Dwayne the Cobb Johnson. Yeah, look at that guy. I, that guy looks like he's spent some time in the gym for sure. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, um, Stephanie? That's <laughs> funny. Well, no, I can see people, you know, if they encounter him, they probably want to take a picture with him just because right. he looks so much like him. Yeah, definitely. So pretty cool there. Local celebrity yeah. for them. So you can check out more of those photos on our website. Fantastic. Thank Thanks, you, RJ. Guys. Right now it's Thank 937, you. about 83 degrees. And you're watching GMSA at 9. And we are going to bring back David Sears and RJ for a look at the weekend sports headlines. Welcome back. It's 941. So we are done with all of that preseason fun for football. Now it's time for the real stuff. Let's check back in with RJ and David for a look at weekend sports. Morning, guys. So glad mm. that preseason is over. <laughs> are you? <laughs> It's yeah, a it, waste of time. It's one of those David. things where you're glad where you're glad just to see football, but then you see the football and yeah. it's really bad, and then you're not so glad anymore. You know, we found out yesterday watching the Cowboys and the Jaguars. Uh oh, mm. Trevor Lawrence is going to be a pretty good quarterback, and the Cowboys' defense is still yeah, bad. yeah. How about those two things? And Dak Prescott hadn't played yet, so we don't know what he's going to be like. They they left him out the whole preseason. Mm -hmm. Why have preseason mm -hmm. if you're not going to get out there and, and, and at least get warmed up? Break a sweat, do something. Yeah, this was interesting because uh, Dak it. has actually started to practice. They say that he's going to get his full reps as we get, but you're right. No, he has technically not played since week five Ooh. or six of last season, so yeah. that's going to be interesting to watch yeah. him. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, yeah, I, that Ooh. guy's going to be a lot of fun to watch. I mean, did, Jacksonville even traded their backup quarterback this weekend because I think it's pretty clear that Trevor's going to get the, the keys to the car from uh, day one there. But most of the Cowboys starters were sitting on the sidelines, so I mean, you know, you can't, <laughs> how do you judge? How do you, how do you tell? So, and that's what they're trying to do is figure out, you know, that sixth linebacker mm -hmm. and the, uh, you know, seventh <laughs> offensive or, lineman. Who's that going to be? That's what they're trying to figure out. So that's why they're letting still those. Still trying guys. to figure out that number two quarterback. Yeah, I was trying to figure that guy out. Yeah. And uh, they got three of them to choose from. And they're all three about the same. Not great. <laughs> Not great. <laughs> well, Urban, um, Urban Meyer's got to be feeling a little better. I don't know about Mike yeah. McCarthy, but, but Urban's got to feel pretty good about this. Well, he's still got a long way to go. No, I know. He's gotta, they have a ways to go, but it, I mean, based on yeah, based on the Basically. the promise and the pedigree that yeah. Trevor Lawrence has, I, I think that he's going to be really good. Hey, um, if you were watching that game, though, man, he can throw it. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. And the timing with these guys already is good. Um, so you know, we'll, we'll see. see. So Maybe. speaking of this backup quarterback situation, the Cowboys uh -huh. will make cuts tomorrow. Right. So we will find out. I think it's going to be Cooper Rush, but uh, we'll see. I think it's going to be. I Cooper think Rush. trade. And I think the Cowboys will be in trouble somebody. if Cooper Rush has to play. No, I think <laughs> or that, or I they could trade for trade. Somebody. Or going to yeah. pick up yeah. somebody. Yeah. And there's rumors they're going to go after a veteran quarterback some, yeah. somewhere else as a backup. Yeah, but yeah, those are just rumors. that as well. The the Texans. Oh yeah, how about them Texans? Here we go. Uh, who's their quarterback? Do they have a quarterback? <laughs> David. Uh, hey, you know what? The Bucks have a quarterback. Bucks have a quarterback. Look at Tom Brady. Tom Brady's like yeah. 44. He's playing preseason games. He's playing preseason games. Game. He's getting warmed up for the Cowboys next week. Uh, 40s, so best that age tell you? ever. Huh? <laughs> I was like 40s. It's a good age. Yeah, yeah it is. Like, yeah. But he's uh, Tom Brady playing. looks like he's 30. Yeah. I mean, you know, he's just he loves to he loves to beat you. Yeah. You don't care if it's preseason or. What win? He just loves to win. And uh, speaking of the uh, the Texans quarterbacks yeah. here, Tyrod Taylor uh, seems mm -hmm. to be the Oops. starter, but uh, yeah, it's no. uh, as we've been saying, it's going to be a long season for the Texans. No sign of uh, Deshaun yeah. Watson. Who no knows show. what's going to happen no with him? Show. He's a no show. He's been showing up to some practices here and there, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, Texans so actually play the Jags to start the year. So yeah, get Texans get the Jags, and then uh, Cowboys get the Bucks. And the word was uh, apparently the Texans are still fielding potential mm -hmm. offers for Deshaun, but mm -hmm. oh, yeah. the asking price right now is just apparently Way ridiculous. Yeah. Some teams yeah. want uh, they're like we will. What the Houston wants, th like three first rounders. Yeah, they, for it's a well, ridiculous tactic. And, yeah. and the problem is for a team that wants Deshaun is you don't know what's going to happen to Deshaun exactly. with all these legal problems that he right. has, right, right, right. plus he the NFL sometime. investigation. You, you never know. So the Texans wind up losing to yeah, Dallas's first regular season yeah. opponents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Okay. But that doesn't we'll matter. We'll see. It's preseason. Yeah. Okay. It's preseason. We're finally on. over with. Um, right, so and, Cowboys, by the way, next Thursday night. Thursday yes. night football. Right. Next yeah. Thursday night. Well, everybody can see. For some reason, I was thinking this Thursday, but it's next. Next Thursday. Next yeah. Thursday. Oh, you got to rest got a week and a half. Three, right. four preseason. Yeah. It helps you gotta, when you, you make a break. <laughs> that <laughs> just <laughs> <seven> days up. <laughs> Been off for a while. Um, so what else do you have? Hey, we got some college ball. Oh, okay, college so ball. we have that there actually starting off this weekend. Yeah. Uh, the pros starting off the week after. And uh, UT has named a starter right there, number one. Hudson Card will be the Longhorn starting quarterback taking over for Sam Ellinger. And uh, it, this is going to be an interesting game. UT hosts Louisiana, both ranked in the top. 25 so I think when they okay. made the schedule they probably did not expect the raging Cajuns to uh, be ranked in the top 25 probably not no. and, and, and their quarterback. <laughs> they did uh, Haynes King here we go Haynes King okay. uh, Justin had some thoughts on Haynes King uh, earlier. what were your thoughts Justin Do you have thoughts quick thoughts. well I haven't seen much of much of him play but he's he's gonna be good I think Okay, well, oh, there Coach's you go. Coach's son. Coach's son. That's, like that. it. that's, that's really good analysis. Wait, he's way to be. commit as an Aggie alum. Know, yes. <laughs> he's an Aggie alum, by the way. Okay. He's and really uh, who's good. the other quarterback we're going to talk about? Um, I don't know who else we're going to talk about. Ah, so <laughs> I just quarterback. thought about Kane T. Oh, see, I wasn't You thinking left thinking. out Texas Tech's quarterback. <laughs> oh, didn't yeah. You? Tyler Shuck mm -hmm. is going to be the quarterback for the Texas Tech Red Raiders this year. He's a transfer from Oregon. He won the Pac-12 with the Ducks last year. I got all kinds of information on this. He won the Pac-12 with Oregon Ducks last Last yeah. year, and here's Next two things that he has that the quarterback for UT and the quarterback for AM don't have. Oh, here we go. Here we he's go. Got two degrees. Oh, he's got a degree in political science, and he's got a wow. degree in what was the other in just in uh, Sorry, throwing that in, uh, out. criminal justice, and he's working on his master's. So he's <laughs> smart <laughs> enough to know Boom. fill in the blank. Yeah, well, there we go. A well-rounded <laughs> quarterback. That. And oh, by the way, he's already being talked about as one of the top five quarterbacks in the country. So that'd be wow. number three. Okay. David, 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 David came ready, yeah. Future board member um, at Texas Tech University. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> See, Justin, that's what we needed. We needed that, Justin. <laughs> uh, he's going to be pretty good. Texas Tech plays Houston <laughs> Saturday, mm -hmm. 6 o'clock on ESPN. UTSA versus Illinois. That is a road game. Ooh. And Texas State hosts Baylor hey, up in San Did you see Illinois-Nebraska this weekend? Oh, uh, boy, I did. Ooh. Unfortunately, I did. Is, is Nebraska that bad or is Illinois that good? A little bit of both, maybe. Okay. That'd be fun. Football, both. football, and more football. Go. The head coach of uh, of Illinois beat Nebraska and was already talking about playing UTSA in his post game mm. press conference. Mm. So there you go, UTSA. It'll be a, a fun one. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Like them. Okay. Well, watch guys, that. thank you. Thank are we done? You. Yes. For now. For now. <laughs> we are done. More, right more to come. Ten. Oh, we're just getting started. <laughs> yes, we are. Ooh. Well, exactly. that's the wrap of weekend sports. Thank you, guys. Yeah. It's okay. You don't have to talk about A and M anymore if you don't want to. Hey, no, I, I, I listen. He's going to be good. Our quarterback's going to be good. And by the way, David, you need more than just a quarterback to win a game. Just no. saying. Oh, wow. That's some trash talk. Fighting wow. words. Right. Wow. Shots fired. Uh, more controversy oh, here in the wow. <laughs> studio. Ooh, football season's back. <laughs> Can't wait. Need, might need a couple of degrees. Okay. How about that? The degree, hey, that's big. The master's. Two Will that help? <laughs> Let's go outside. Yes. Uh, <laughs> wait, guys. wait, hold on. What did you mean? Let's, let's go outside. Let's go outside. Oh, no. That wasn't a threat. I promise. <laughs> I'll see you in a little bit, Dave. I'm ready, man. Come on. <laughs> no, okay. 82. <laughs> Two point is at 73. Calm wins. Feels like 87 out there. Some threats being thrown around here. Uh, 80 Bandera, 79 Bernie Stage, 83 Rio Medina, 85 right now Stinson, uh, 82 Uvalde, 82 Creuso Springs. It's warming up out there. Two points are in the 70s. It's, uh, it's thick. The air is thick, very humid, and we'll continue to see heat index values jump up near 100 again today. Uh, 98, the, the forecast heat index here in San Antonio, 98 in Honda, 104 in Pleasanton. Uh, here's a look at the forecast. By noontime, some showers and storms developing. About a 30% chance here in San Antonio. A little better chance if you're out in the hill country, maybe out west. We're not going to see a ton of coverage, but if you do get one of these showers or storms, it's probably going to put down some good rain. There's enough moisture in the atmosphere for that. So just a heads up. By the time we get into tomorrow, same story, but I think the coverage will be a little bit less tomorrow. We'll see just some isolated stuff, 20% chance of rain as you get into your Tuesday afternoon. Rest of today, temperatures up around 94, 30% chance of rain during the afternoon hours, as I mentioned. And let's talk about Tropical Storm Ida. Now you can see the spin right there, right over, uh, well, nearing Jackson, uh, Mississippi. Tornado watch box on the eastern side of this. This is where you get some of these bands that can produce tornadoes, which can be dangerous. 
uh, obviously. And so uh, parts of Mississippi and Alabama are going to have to watch out for that today. The western side of this is sort of drier at this point and not seeing anything here in Texas. We uh, didn't see any effects from Ida, thankfully. As it moves north and northeast, it'll produce heavy rain along the way. Uh, four to six inches possible in addition to what has already fallen. And so places like Birmingham, Nashville, even Atlanta could get some pretty heavy rain out of this. And we have Ida, of course, but there's more out there uh, that we need to watch. This system here is just coming off the coast of Africa, but the uh, Hurricane Center thinks there's about 80% chance of development as it moves west into the Atlantic. We have plenty of time to watch that. And then we have Tropical Storm Kate, which is newly developed just within the last hour or so. This is going to move north, probably won't affect land at all. And there's another area the Hurricane Center is watching here in the western part of the Caribbean. If we're going to see anything here, there's not even storms yet. It's going to be a very slow process, about a 20% chance of development over the next five days. Certainly, we have time to watch it as well. But uh, the tropics heating up. We've already had Julian and Kate now. Kate named this morning. Next name on the list will be Larry, followed by Mindy and Nicholas. Here's the future cast. High pressure starts to move towards the middle part of the country. Doesn't move over top of us, though. It's far enough north to where some disturbances work underneath the ridge. And that's why I think rain chances, low rain chances, stay in the forecast most of this week. Best chance probably today, but beyond that, I really can't. To take rain chances out 20% shot each and every day. Temperatures will be in the mid 90s. Heat index will be up around 100. Guys. Thank you, Justin. <laughs> and now it's 951, about 84 degrees. And would you drive this hot pink Jeep? We'll look at how much it costs and why the company chose pink. That's coming up next. Hey. Well, now the sun is up, we're getting a better look at some of the damage and flooding. And right now you're looking at a live look via WLOX. This is of uh, storm damage uh, in the Biloxi, Mississippi area right now. Driving right along what looks like a coastal area, still quite a bit of water out there. And it looks like rain is still falling in the Biloxi Gulfport area. And we're going to talk about a popular vehicle. It's a Jeep and it's pink. It's pink, mm -hmm. and if you're a fan of the old TV show Happy Days or Laverne and Shirley, yeah. you may remember the character that inspired this color Jeep Wrangler. Then okay. this character uh, was close to the Fonz at Very one close. point. Yeah. Yeah. So we we already talked about the, you know the Wrangler is hot. Mm -hmm. It's a hot selling vehicle, and now it has a color to match. This is called Tuscadero Pink. Tuscadero Pink. Do you want to? And then this is after the character Pinky Tuscadero who was a short-lived love interest for the Fonz from Happy Days. A similar hot pink color was previously offered on the 2010 Dodge Challenger. It's called, what they called it, Furious Fuchsia, and will only be available through November as a $395 option. And they said with the Jeep brand celebrating its 80th anniversary, it's a perfect time to launch a confident and custom color on the most iconic Jeep vehicle. Inspired by Pinky Tuscadero from Happy Days. It's perfect.